Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are today we are going to discuss chapter number ten in paper one of anthropology. Chapter ten. This is something a very important topic, but it is very simple. It's very very simple. Irrespective of uh, any discipline or irrespective of you opting for anthropology or not, one need to have idea about these aspects of human biology, irrespective of anything. One should have some idea about what exactly is happening to or during the different stages of growth and development. And in our examination, this topic is very very important because this bit a huge topic on. We can expect at least uh, one question from this topic. So you need to be thorough in this. It's very very simple again. For people who are from science background, I don't think there will be any need for them to sit and attend. But uh, irrespective of anything, right? Uh, because of the heterogeneity of our students, if you will be from science background, if you will be from non-science background. So it is my duty to make it sure that everyone here understands the concepts here. So I'll be very slow while discussing this concept of human growth and development. See, first we'll be discussing about uh, uh, stages of growth: prenatal, natal, infant, childhood, adolescence and then senescence and maturity right from the time of conception right from fertilization until aging and senescence there is one science called as gerontology gerontology actually deals with the science of old age so what are all the physiological changes which happens in our body when we become old and these changes are irreversible and nobody can escape from this fine so one need to know the value of the youth value of youthfulness in you I've seen people wasting their time simply with electronic gadgets, mobiles, playing video games. So, please, this is the time, right, when you have a lot of energy. Your body will cooperate with whatever you are going to do. But maybe after 40 or 50 years, the same may not be the condition. Come back. After the stages of growth, we will discuss factors affecting growth and development. There are number of factors which affects the growth and the development. A number of factors. So uh, it includes some genetic factors, biochemical factors, environmental factors, nutritional, cultural, and also socio-economic factors. Then gauging and the senescence. Theories and observations. There are number of theories which deals with the uh, aging because now we cannot just prove what exactly was the reason for aging. There is no particular single reason for aging. So there are number of theories which are broadly classified into cellular theories of aging and extracellular extracellular theories of aging. Cellular and uh, extracellular theories of aging. Then uh, human physics and uh, somatotypes. We can see in our uh, ones yeah. in the cricket matches. If the physics of a wicket keeper, right, will almost be different from the physics of uh, 
ఏ ఫాస్ట్ బౌలర్ అగైన్ ఏ బ్యాట్స్మన్ ఏ ట్రూ గ్రేట్ బ్యాట్స్మెన్ రైట్ దే విల్ హ్యావ్ ఏ డిఫరెంట్ ఫిజిక్ సో హ్యూమన్ ఫిజిక్ రైట్ ఇట్స్ అవర్ బాడీ బిల్డ్ టు సమ్ ఎక్స్టెంట్ ఇట్ డిసైడ్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ది యాక్టివిటీస్ ఆఫ్ వీ కెన్ డూ వీ కెన్ డూ ఓకే so how human physic is classified what do you mean by somatotyping somatotype means a different of uh, body physic type if you will be very fat and bulky if you will be very lean so how we are classifying the human body into different somatotypes and final finally biological and the chronological longevity what do you mean by biological age and the chronological age so now let us start our discussion from the first chapter uh, from the uh, from uh, stages of growth again no I, i think i don't think there is a need to explain you the difference between growth and the development growth and development simply growth means uh, increase in size increase in size is growth development means along with uh, the increase in size if you develop a number of cognitive skills if your iq increases if your physiology improves after uh, in age of 13 or 14 somebody attains a sexual maturity this is development this is development okay fine now so first let us discuss the prenatal stage of of growth prenatal that is uh, before the birth of the individual after fertilization and until the delivery of the baby we call it as prenatal stage so let us briefly discuss uh, the process of fertilization to some extent about embryology and then uh, implantation and the growth of the embryo after 3 months we call it as a fetus this is uh, the female reproductive system this is the uterus this is the fallopian tube these are the ovaries these are the ovaries here the follicles are the eggs developed here and once when it matures once when it matures it slowly moves through the fallopian tube fertilization happens here in the fallopian tube this was an upsc prelims question some 15 years back in general studies they ask this one where exactly the fertilization of the sperm and ovum happens so fertilization i hope you know by this time what do you mean by fertilization fertilization refers to the fusion of sperm and ovum the fusion of a sperm and ovum creates the zygote which further divides multiplies to form an embryo
and this fertilization happens in uh, the fallopian tube in the fallopian tube so once when uh, the eggs get fertilized uh, it slowly descends down <coughs> and uh, it gets implanted in uh, the uterus excuse me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it gets implanted in the uterus once when it gets implanted two layers develops around the, the dividing mass of cells one is called as amnion and uh, the other one is uh, the chorion it descends down it descends down and it gets implanted here it gets fixed here sometimes right it happens if for uh, the fallopian tube is not healthy if it is not healthy or sometimes there is too much of hairy growth inside of the fallopian tube as a result right after fertilization the fertilized zygote may fail to descend down it may get settled here itself this creates a dangerous condition called as ectopic or tubular pregnancy because ectopic pregnancy or tubular pregnancy this is a very a very dangerous condition and if this is not detected properly and uh, if the zygote or the embryo so the fallopian tip couldn't uh, accommodate uh, a huge growing embryo here if it bursts to opens and that condition is lethal actually condition is lethal okay fine so once when it descends down as i told you the dividing embryo gets implanted into the walls of the uterus it gets fixed into the walls nowadays right there are number of form uh, oral contraceptive pills oral contraceptive pills we call it one is uh, i pill so what actually the i pill does it makes this layer so smooth that it will prevent this dividing cells to get attached or to get implanted in the uterus and if at all there is a formation of an embryo it gets washed away it gets washed away fine so as i told you there are two layers develops so once when an embryo gets implanted so dividing mass of uh, cells this will be this is the uterus wall this will be surrounded by two layers the inner layer and the one outer layer the inner layer is called as amnion and the outer layer is the chorea so in between this right will be having amniotic fluids and chorionic fluids the chorion right this is the outer sac which covers the embryo this chorion itself acts as a gland now and it produces a hormone the chorion itself right acts like a gland and it produces one hormone called as human
ഹ്യൂമാൻ കൊറിയോണിക് ഗോനഡ ട്രോഫി സോ ഗൊനഡ ട്രോഫി ഇസ് എ ഗ്രോത്ത് ഹാർമോ ദിസ് ഹ്യൂമൻ കൊറിയോണിക് ഗൊനഡ ട്രോഫി ദറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദ ഗൊനഡ ട്രോഫി produced by the korea so when this will happen only one and only when there is a korea when a korean develops the korean develops only when the amnion and korea it develops only when an embryo gets implanted in the uterus so the only source for the human chorionic gonadotropin they even call it as beta hcg the only source for chorionic gonadotropin in the human blood right is because of fertilization formation of a zygote multiplying that into an embryo and once in the embryo gets implanted into the uterus then develops the amnion and chorion so chorion acts like a gland and the only source for beta chorionic gonadotropin is the this chorea generally for pregnancy um one testing kit will be used where using urine they'll be testing the beta chorionic gonadotropin correct so the presence of traces of urine or in urine that there are traces of beta chorionic gonadotropin then no it confirms a pregnancy confirmed there is no other so there is no other way for this hormone no, to be there in the system if the hormone is there it is one and only because of pregnancy so this is how pregnancy is tested using uh, the testing kit got it fine so beta uh, chorionic gonadotropin so what happens immediately after uh, the zygote formation fusion of a ovum and the sperm is called as fertilization fertilization generally happens in the fallopian tube and this results in the formation of zygote here there will be n number of chromosomes here also there will be n number of chromosomes in a zygote the 2n number will be restored half the chromosomes or half the dna material comes from the ovum and half from the sperm it both fuses as a result the 2n number of the chromosomes will be restored here will be restored here okay so this zygote right then uh, by a process called as uh, cleavage it divides this divides this cell division right further continues and uh, the next process called as blastulation blastulation right it may happen it may continue up to 6 days after pregnancy this blastulation results in the formation of a mass of cells 
a round ball of a mass of cells until this is called this we call this blastula until the stage of blastula the cells remain in an undifferentiated state the cells remain in a undifferentiated and that means all the cells are alike all the cells right perform the same function on the uh, will have same structure and function the next process is gastrulation where the cells right will start getting arranged into a three germ layer the outermost layer is called as ectoderm the innermost one is called as endoderm and the middle one mesoderm now so what is the big difference between uh, the blastula and the gastrula so look at this particular picture so the original zygote excuse me give me a minute zygote by the process of cleavage the cell divides and it becomes a blastula blastula is a mass of cell see uh, the cross section of uh, blastocyte or a blastula see here the cells still remain in an undifferentiated state then further it divides and by the process called as gastrulation it becomes a gastrula when here the cells will be arranged into three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm now this is the first important stage of a cell differentiation here the original cells right these are divided into three groups of cells here and every group of cell is going to produce a range of tissues from the ectoderm right originates our skin and the digestive system mesoderm right produces number of organs like heart lungs liver etc and most of our endocrine glands right these are a product of the cells to divide from the endoderm So I'll tell you one simple example for cell differentiation. So there are different cells in our body. See, if you take a cell from uh, our hand here and take one cell from pancreas, you know pancreas is here, right? This is our stomach. It is a pancreas which synthesizes or which produces insulin, and that play insulin plays a major role in the maintaining. the blood sugar level blood sugar level so uh, the cell here right this is not capable of see, this if you take a cell from here and you take a cell from uh, pancreas both the cells will look alike there will be nothing extra in this cell which is there in that cell but uh, a cell from your pancreas is capable of uh, synthesizing insulin 
but this cell cannot do it. So this is called a cell differentiation. Cells are differentiated to perform different activities. And if you take one cell from adrenal glands, adrenal, 